that you again? Well, welcome back to the How To Show. This week, we'll be making a pinhole camera. You can use the tools right under your roof. Well, follow me to my workshop. Off we go to my workshop. So the materials that we will be needing is some glue. We got some carpenter glue, a glue stick, and a glue gun. And we'll also need some sandpaper, aluminum foil, and an exacto knife. You're also going to need a pen, a pencil, a ruler, a square, duct tape, and hockey tape, and also cardboard. The first step into making your pinhole camera is to find out all the dimensions you would like to use. The dimensions we will be using is four and a half by six. You can use any dimensions if you desire. Knowing the dimensions you'd like to use, mark them onto a piece of cardboard like so. Make sure to use a ruler and the square ruler to get all angles at a 90 degrees. Since we will be using the dimensions four and a half by six, our base will be six by six. Now you will need to draw the sides of your camera beside the base using the dimensions you have chosen. After drawing up all your sides, make sure to double check that they are the right size and at a 90 degree angle. When you are finished, you will end up with something like this. When you are satisfied with all your sides, you can now begin to start cutting them up. Use an X-Acto knife and a ruler to make sure you get all straight edges. Remember, when cutting, you should only cut the outsides. To make it easier to fold, you can cut the lines that are left onto the piece of cardboard, but only cut little slits. Make sure you don't go all the way through. Now, it will be easier to fold. You will now need to make two more sides for the camera. Depending on the dimensions you have used, make sure to mark them on a piece of cardboard and cut them out. After you have cut all your sides, fold them up like this. Tape all sides together. When all sides are taped up, make sure there are no holes by holding it up to the light. The next step is making a lid for our camera. To make the lid, measure it out to be half an inch longer than the base of your camera. When you have that finished, make four flaps on each side about one inch thick. When you are done, you can now begin to cut the lid out. If you did it right, it will end up something like this. Cut slits along the lid of your camera. This will make it easier to fold, just like what you did with your camera. When all your slits have been cut, fold them down into place and tape all the sides together, making sure there are no holes in the lid. We had a hole here and that's why we taped it up. Don't forget to tape the insides of the box as well. When that's done, cut out a small square piece of aluminum foil. Trace it onto your camera. Make sure to center it. Draw a small square in the center of the square you have just drawn for the opening of your pinhole. When you've got that done, cut out the smaller square that you've just drawn. With the aluminum foil, sand it until it becomes smooth. Smooth. With the aluminum foil, glue the outside edges like so.
Now glue it to the inside of your camera, covering the square hole that you've cut out. While the glue dries, we will be making our shutter. The first part of the shutter will be the same length as the box you have already cut out, like that. You will now need to make two more rectangles, about half a centimeter longer than the first one you've already drawn. It should look something like this. You will now need to make a frame for the camera that will hold the shutter in place. This is how it should look. The inside square should be the same size as the square on your camera. The outside square should be a centimeter longer. To make the actual shutter, it will have to be about double the size of the outside square. This is what it should look like. What we will be doing now is poking a hole into the aluminum foil, making sure that it is aligned with the center of the back where your photographic paper will be. With the cut pieces, place them along the side of the square, making it look something like this. When you are satisfied, glue them down into place. When the pieces are dry, glue on the frame on top of them, making it look like this. If you have glued all the pieces on properly, the shutter should be able to go in and out smoothly. We will now be making two slots that will be placed at the back of the camera to hold the photographic paper. The slot should be about half an inch shorter than the height of your camera and the width should be about two centimeters. Mark it onto the cardboard and cut them out when you are satisfied. When you've cut out the slots for the camera, place them onto the side about a millimeter away from the back and glue them into place. Make sure to do it on both sides. To ensure that the slots at the back of the camera work properly, cut out a template about the same dimensions you would like your photograph to be. Place your template inside like this. The final step in finishing your camera is to paint it. You could paint something like this, put different colors around, or even make a little animal. Or even just cut some newspaper, some collage, some pictures onto it. And there you go. You've got your very own pinhole camera. Now you can go outside and take a picture. Prepare the darkroom by setting up your developer, stop bath, fixer, and water wash. You can purchase your developer and fixer at your local photography store. These include Black's, Kodak, and Henry's. The stop bath is just water. The water wash is also water. You can find this right under your sink. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you're satisfied with your camera. Join us next week when we'll be making our very own backyard birdhouse. Well, see you later.